welcome to the Tulsa Music Stream. And now, your host, Scott and Janice Squires. You want the dirt? You've got it. Hey everyone, it's our Merry Christmas special. Isn't it great? It's super great. Yeah, I mean, we are like just, what, two days away from Christmas? Oh, or yeah. is it four? Four days. Four days. It's out there. Four I mean, days. no, it's not out there. It's upon us right now. <laughs> Whenever uh, it is, Monday. I hope everyone is having a great uh, December. A very Merry Christmas to yes. everyone. Absolutely. And uh, this is episode 98. We'll be joining live with Joey Allen, guitar player of the rock band warrant yes and uh make sure you share um this uh stream on all your facebook uh pages your groups and all that good stuff uh and always hit that subscribe button on youtube and we are on twitter at tul uh, music stream we're also on twitch and also all podcast platforms like spotify iheart radio amazon apple podcasts and google podcasts so you know if you're on your way to work in the mornings just uh you know dial us up at tulsa music stream yeah it's true we're all over the place and man to get to do 98 of these is quite an accomplishment we had no idea it was going to you know, go on this long and be this fun. And we're certainly hoping to continue it uh, long into the future. Going forward, we've been so blessed to get so many of these amazing artists on with us. They've all been super accommodating. Uh, This gentleman that's going to be on with us tonight is the same way. He's been super cool. You actually had a phone conversation with him that led to this interview. He said he was a great guy on the phone. He was really cool. I mean, it's almost like he... uh you know, I sent him the email and then he uh, asked me to call him. And so then uh, it's like, uh, so I call him and, and we talk at, at my job and um, he's at his job. And it was almost like he was interviewing me to interview him. So, you know, it was really cool, but he was a really down to earth guy. And um, I, I'm looking forward to uh, having this conversation with him, with all of you. Merry Christmas. Absolutely. We got, we got some people in here. Uh, Tracy Long, hello to you. Rick Fox, give Joey my regards. He apparently sent me a few messages recently because I sent him some of my warrant photos from 2023 Rock Loma. Yeah, Rick, we're going to talk about that. Uh, I've got a picture that I'm going to pull up with uh, the warrant guys and Doug Burgess hanging out out there. Jamie Hooper says, hope you're feeling better, Scott. How are you feeling, Scott? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. And I just want to say... Uh, Hi to everybody on in YouTube. Uh, they got their own little chat going on. Uh, yes. Seagull Rock says riff equals pretty good. But um, <laughs> thank you guys, all of you guys, for joining the chat room. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of you. And like we like we say, uh, we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers on YouTube, and and we're close to that. So if you haven't hit subscribe um, on our YouTube, and just uh, go over there and hit subscribe, hit like, and uh, you know leave a comment or two. It'd be awesome. Definitely. And, and all of you guys on Facebook are always. Uh, uh, you know, awesome. So. Yes, you are. That's where we've built this thing from the ground up. Lori Brass, hello to you. Michael Tribola down in Texas. We love you, buddy. Say hi to the family. Tracy Long, Jamie Hooper, Ben Cutler. Thank you guys for being in here. I tell you, you're, you're going to catch me clearing my throat a lot tonight. We actually both got sick and I, I tried not to, but it happened. We we both got the dreaded C, COVID, but, but we're through it other than the residual stuff left over. So bear with the uh, clearing of the throat that's going to happen from time to time. I'll try not to do it right in the microphone. That's pretty loud. <laughs> so we, we are working on, uh, obviously, more episodes for the upcoming new year. Um, <clears throat> I don't... What do you think about it when we tell people who we're working on? Should we leave that a surprise? Oh, yeah, kinda, always. I mean, it's it's good stuff. And, you know, hopefully things are going to continue to grow. We, we have resources out there that uh, are very kind and, you know, sometimes lend a helping hand to establish some connections. We've built our own connections, you know, fortunately. It's been a, a blessing to uh, build the bridge so we can get through to these guys and keep bringing you this content because I mean these guys stories are really interesting and Mm -hmm. we know not everyone can catch the the show live you know but the the you can always come back and watch the replay and uh these guys always have interesting stories and it's just so impressive how many of them are so humble and uh just willing to talk here's Joey I'm gonna get him in here 
All right. So, Here in just a few mil- moments. Yeah. A few minutes, yeah. seconds, actually. It's, it's it's going down. He's he's coming in the room. There's a process to get everybody yeah. in, get them hooked up to the audio. So. And and just uh, just so you guys know, we are on TikTok, so you can always uh, uh, if you guys are on TikTok, we got some TikTok videos that we're doing, yeah. and uh, we're also on Instagram, and yeah. we also put our shorts out there on YouTube. So it's true. It's all about having fun with these uh, interviews. Hey Joey, can you hear me? Because all I can see is the top of your head <laughs> there you are <laughs> Can you, actually that was that was a pretty great view i mean your, your head is looking spectacular man i gotta hey, man. i gotta I bring shave, you. I, I did not shave today so you're good it's it's, it's all rock right. and roll man you're good man, how, it, man. I'm wearing, I'm wearing how, it long today how are you feeling bud? are you doing all right am i doing all right yes sir I'm doing fantastic. How about you guys? We're good, and we so appreciate you coming on here. We got a lot to cover uh, with you tonight. Uh-oh. Thanks. Uh oh, can you not hear me? A lot to cover. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, a little. Uh, uh, yeah, we're not going to be here for three hours. Don't worry. It's yeah. it's all good. But you were super cool to to talk to Scott on the phone and and set this up. We appreciate that. First order of business. We've got to tell all our viewers out there watching us live right now. You guys are coming to our neck of the woods, and we are so pumped about this. We need everyone to get their ticket. Friday, January 19th at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Tulsa. It's going to be Warrant and Winger. I mean, it's a double shot of rock and roll that night. You do have to be over 21 to attend. You can call 918-384-ROCK for more info. The Will Call booth will open at 5 o'clock that night. Doors at 7 show at eight for more information visit warrantrocks.com what i'd like to ask you joey give us a kind of a sense of what people can expect uh set list wise that night when you guys come rock for us here in tulsa oh you're asking the right guy because i write the set list yes you do. <laughs> yeah i mean um to be honest with you we've been playing the same we do a new set every year and then and then we tweak it as we go along sometimes songs don't work in a set so you have to pull them out and you try another one in a set or you move them around it's kind of like it's kind of like a recipe you know what i mean right and um you try to get the right thing and then you have things where you know you have to have a 75 minute set a 60 minute set a 45 minute set so you uh you have to dial it in as you go and yeah. um and we've been dialing in the one we've got all year but i you know friday you know, set, sunday night was our our last show's new year's eve but we did a three day run in Texas last week and um, I told everybody, Hey, start thinking about a new set list. So we'll probably have a new set list. So to be honest with you, I have no idea what it's going to be like when we play Oklahoma. Oh, that's how's cool. That, uh, no, that that's, that's great. I mean, I mean, it'll be a surprise that way, but you know, do you guys find that as you go do these dates in, in various parts of the country, do, do certain parts of the country, or maybe that's not even a good way to, 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 you know, segment it, but do certain segments of people respond better to particular songs and you guys kind of start figuring out your formulas like hey we're gonna you know kind of hone more in on these songs sort of like kiss probably <laughs> plays shandy in australia you know but uh, not, not, you know what i mean yeah, i get it i get it yeah no not really i mean look if i you know if the band played what we wanted to play you probably wouldn't like it you know mm. because because you know, although you've got to play the songs that were hits and, this, you know, the first two records obviously sold more than the third record that have sold more than any record since then, you've got to play those songs, you know, and, and we, you know, we do dig deep into the first two records. We don't dig deep enough into, into Dog Eat Dog, which I wish we did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was a fun record to make. And even some of the stuff we've done with Robert, there's some great tunes. We've yeah. tried a few different tunes, you know, from, from the two Robert records, um, live and and we used to to play sex ain't love off of rockaholic we used we tried devil dancer last year off of um of louder harder faster which for us it's killer right we're like oh a new song it's heavier it's like it's fun for us but the the people are just like yeah what's that you know yeah so you, you have to be cognizant of who you're playing to but you know, you don't know. Some people might be there. They've never seen us live. They're like, you know, we're we're in our late fifties. We're not running around and, and jumping up and down like we used to. But what's important is that the music sounds great. It's one hundred and ten percent live. Um, we're all singing. We're all playing. There's no tracks. 
And what the set list is, is, is just that. It's it's heavy on the first two records, a little bit of Doggy Dog, a little bit of Louder, Harder, Faster. Yeah. What what starts this night and ends the night? What starts, I couldn't tell you. What ends, you can probably guess. It's Cherry Pie every single night. Sure. That's, our, that, that's our free bird, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's it's so your rock sweet. and roll all night. Yeah. Yeah, dude, lo- love both. Love Skinner, love Kiss. I mean, thank God we've got a song that's, that not even close to either one of those, but you know, it's, it's, uh, it's the big one for us. So it's fun to play, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to play by the end of the night. You sure. Know? And I went to your website and I pulled the, the meet and greet package in, info. I'm, I'm hoping this is still current. I, I think there's meet and greets available at the Tulsa uh, show. And, and, yeah. you know, one thing I don't know if people know, please correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, but you know, Warrant doesn't run the meet and greets themselves. Aren't those handled by a, an outside party that it kind of does it on your behalf and schedule the schedules those for for the people that want to do them? Yeah, we don't. I mean, all we do is at the gigs we meet people. That's all I know. I don't know who does what. <laughs> right on. You know, here's the deal. <clears throat> you know, since you know making music and recording music and selling music isn't an income for very many bands anymore or since the advent of a lot of streaming services that don't pay artists what they should pay and there's there's things going on in congress you know not that congress gets a lot done nowadays on either side but there mm-hmm. there there's a lot of advocacy for paying musicians what you know for their craft you know yeah. and there's a lot of people getting rich off not paying musicians so there's, you know, on top of that, you know, you, you go, well, how do you make money? Well, tour, you know, you've got to do meet and greets. A lot of people are like, that's shitty. You should meet your friends regardless, or fans regardless, shouldn't charge them for it. And I'll tell you what, if somebody walks up to me anywhere outside of a gig and I'm, I'll take the time to sign anything, take sure. pictures. I don't say, well, give me 10 bucks. You know what I mean? <laughs> but at a gig when it's controlled and you get, a package and you get more of a intimate, you get all five guys together ready to go on stage. That's what we do. It's just another revenue stream for us, you know, and we treat treat people with respect, you know, nine out of 10 people have a great time. There's always one person that's, that's not happy, you know, at a great because they didn't get enough time with the band or, you know, but we, we take, you know, a few minutes, two or three minutes with each fan. It's not like, Photos out, photos out, photos out, you know, if they want right. something to really sign and, you well, know, me, so it is what it is. Let me encourage people. I, I hope you heard what, what Joey just said. You know, this is a, this is a revenue stream. This is a way that you can support them in addition to buying the ticket. So for you guys going out to Hard Rock, I want you to go to national-axe.com slash warrant and sign up for one of those VIP meet and greet packages. It's going to help the band. You know, these guys are still out there giving us their all. I mean, giving us these these amazing shows, great times. So it's it's the way we can give back and keep them going. So go again, go to national dash axe.com slash There you go. go. And you can get a skateboard and break your neck, you know? <laughs> like I like I almost did last week. I got an eleven year old son and he's got skateboards all over the place and I I got on, I used to be good when I was young and I got on one and it went, I'm like, got off immediately because I'm like, I'm going to kill myself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I've done that with roller skates. You know? Oh yeah. I had my oh, daughter yeah. at a roller skating party, you know, and I thought I used to do this back in the day, man, you know, got there. Oh no. Whole oh, new no. ball game. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it hurts when you fall. Trust me. You know, trust you, yeah. You mentioned how you know how the fans how they react to songs that they're not familiar with, and isn't it so strange? Like with bands, when you first start out, basically no one knows your songs, but yet they were, you know, they were rocking out, and 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 all your new, all these songs they weren't hits yet. They were all you know they weren't established, but you're throwing out all your originals, and people were just eating them up. But nowadays it's like, oh no, we, we just got to have the stuff that we are you know familiar with how how different is that you know from coming up with a band like yourself that did that back in the sunset boulevard days and then now today where you're like oh no we can't do that because of that you know oh you mean that are you are we going into the woke me too well no world. just I'm just you know how people crazy. just people who you know like you said they they gotta have the hits and if there's not there oh. then they you know oh, that's cool you gotta give them the hits i mean look you know the show um if the show were for the band like i said people probably wouldn't have a good time because we'd play a bunch of stuff 
we don't get to play. Yeah. It's challenging and it's fun and it's different, you know, not that playing the songs that everybody wants to hear is not challenging or fun. It definitely is, but that's your responsibility as a band to play those tunes. And it's your responsibility to change it up every once in a while. So it's not the same thing. You know, if you go back to a city after, you know, a year or 18 months that it's not the same set list, you know, or that I do a two minute solo to give Robert a break so he can get a breath, you know, and Mm -hmm. So I change up my solo a little bit, which is what I got to do for for next year. So yeah. I can definitely tell you that that Tulsa is going to get a new solo, new two minutes from me. Um, <laughs> there you go. That's great. <laughs> we're going to start with a different song. We're probably not going to start with "So Damn Pretty." Yeah. There you go. Anymore, so, you you know, know, speaking you of new, to do what you gotta do. it's a responsibility. You know. Yes, yeah. For sure. And speaking of new new music, you know, uh, Eric Turner you know, recently has said, you know, about you guys got some new riffs, you got some half finished songs on, but they're on hold due to some personal stuff. Um, I guess band stuff. Um, I know that like in Sugarland, uh, Texas, Jerry Dixon wasn't on stage, so Robbie Crane, I guess, was on stage. Um, anything that is going on in the world? You want, the all, the, world? Do you want all the warrant dirt? Is That's that right. <laughs> There, there's, it's so PG and so boring. It's, there's no, I mean, <laughs> look, Eric missed, um, we played San Antonio Friday night and the only two original guys on stage were Steven and I, and, and, wow. and you know, I mean, it's, 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 um, not that raw. I played with in this band with Robert longer than I did Janie. I had Janie and I had eight years together, albeit great years and great records, but, um, Robert and I've been playing together longer than Janie and I did. So, mm. But um, Eric's son graduated from college. There's some, you know, there's some dirt, right? I mean, yeah. what a beautiful thing to happen for a family yes. to be able to experience that. And I told Eric that if he missed it, I was going to kick his ass, you know, because <laughs> uh, he because mi- he missed his son's uh, high school graduation. And I just told him, don't miss it. Right. And we've got a very capable uh, stage right tech that went to GIT. That he's actually our stage right tech. He handles Robbie, Jerry, whoever's playing bass that night, Eric, and he plays keyboards, you know? Wow. So, so, um, and they're on stage, you know? So he's a great player and he stepped up and played Eric's guitar parts. Um, then the next night, Eric was back. And then the next night, Jerry was back. Wow. So, was, so we played three gigs with three different lineups. Um, don't ask me which one sounded better. <laughs> Because I'll because I'll lie to you. We don't but, like that dirt. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you know, look, Jerry has been in you know in this band since the beginning. He's played every gig for thirty five years. Um, it's it's not um, foreign to anybody that travels and does one hundred twenty five to one hundred and fifty flights a year. Oh yeah. You can get burnt out on doing that. You can get tired of hotels. You can get tired of planes. And, and Jerry just needs to take a break. Yeah. He's healthy. Um, he, he's, he's coming in and playing the shows at the end of every month. Um, there's nothing wrong with Jerry. There's nothing wrong with the band. Robbie Crane, who is an amazing bass player and an amazing person has been playing bass pretty much for this band since COVID got over with and we came back out. Hmm. Um, so you know and he brings a whole nether set of tools to this band that's made everybody in the band step their game up so for us even though we'd love to have jerry there 24 7 he's not will he ever be again i don't know you know Mm -hmm. um we'd love that but if not we've got you know a family member and robbie robbie's known the guys in the band since before i was in the band in 84. You know, Robbie grew up in Hollywood, so he's been a part of the music scene in L.A. for a long time. And it is what it is, but that's the dirt. So, you know, Stephen missed a few gigs because Stephen had a, um, had what, he had a heart? You know, he he had some, uh, we're all getting older, man. Oh, yeah, I understand. He had a little bit of pain in his chest. And this is all on, you know, online, so everybody knows this that cares to know it. He had um, like a 98% blockage in his, his left ventricle. Oof. artery like mm. the widow maker waiting to happen oh man Ugh. and uh thank god robert mason's got good doctors mr the the healthiest guy in the band robert mason he'll like that, said that. <laughs> he's got great doctors in arizona and he turned steven on to his doctor and uh 
and Stephen got a stint put in and he's healthy. So at the risk of sounding like old, broken down men, which we're not, um, father, father time always wins. Yeah. And um, and we're just trying to take care of ourselves and be healthy. So, well, hopefully yeah. the uh, new music will be off hold here, um, and hopefully you know you guys will come out with a new album. I mean, always I, I'm still the guy that still loves new music. You know, I, I still go out and get new music. I'm not one of these guys that say, "Oh, fuck the new music stuff." I still go out there. I mean, louder, harder, faster. Oof. I you know play that. I whatever. I'm I'm that guy, but. You know, I'm sure there's many others, so I'm I'm looking forward to it. And Jerry Dixon's one of my favorite bassists. So yeah, hundred percent. He is he is a fabulous bass player. He's he's one of my top three. Um, Tom Peterson being another. Right. Tom knows. I hail him. We play with Cheap Trick every once in a while, and I always bow to the Tom Peterson. And and uh, Robin always tells me to get up. He gets enough of that. You know. What a perfect but, um, segue into this next picture I'm going to put up for you. Do you know how many of us wish we could have this thing around our necks for just 30 <laughs> seconds? I, no, I want to, no, no. dude, what, what was it like putting that thing around your neck? How heavy is it? And how amazing was it playing with those guys? I'm a, uh, this is the first band I ever saw live. I mean, I saw them open for kiss on the love gun tour when I was, I think 15, 15, 14 or 15. Wow. So, um, wow i mean it's a dream come true uh, they're they're they are uh they should they should be playing stadiums headlining they're an amazing band yeah. their catalog's amazing they're amazing people um i i don't know what else to say i mean that that says it all for me i mean uh rick's just a great guy everybody in that band's great the only one i don't know is bunny i've never met bunny i know dax very well in fact mm -hmm. dax is a warrant fan and has funny stories about playing Dirty, uh, the first record over and over on a, on a, on a family vacation where his dad finally pulled over and got him his first pair of earphones because he wouldn't stop playing down boys over. So Rick got <laughs> the pair in the song, got Dax in the earphones when he was a young boy, but, um, they're just amazing, man. I mean, the best part of that picture is that Scott Rick's tech has a shirt on. And if you read it, it says arugula won't help. Arugula won't help. Arugula won't help. <laughs> And you're wondering, what's that mean? <laughs> You'll have to ask Scott. It's a great, it's a great story. Okay. Um, wow. I, I will keep it personal for him, um, but he's a fantastic gentleman as well. So, look, cheap tricks, just amazing. Fantastic. Just, yeah. We can come through. So real quick, you mentioned a minute ago, we're, we're going to move on to other stuff here real quick, but I do want to get some thoughts from you. You talked about father time is undefeated. Boy, is it ever. You put up a recent post, uh, you know, reflecting on Miles Goodwin, April Wine, Steve Riley of LA Guns, both of whom we just recently mm -hmm. lost. I would like for you to just share a few thoughts about what both of those guys meant to you, you know, maybe mm -hmm. some, some favorite thoughts or maybe even favorite memories with both of them. Wow, man! Don't you're gonna you're gonna uh, you're gonna bring tears to my eyes here if you're not careful. Uh -oh. April Wine. Um, wow, they had a record called Harder, Faster. Hmm. Uh oh. Mm -mm. Hmm. So we're all fans. Um, we're all fans. I mean that that record to me growing up was amazing. I played a song called Babes in Arms off of it. My one of my first bands. Um, and and you know, that's what it means to me. I mean, it, it goes that far back for me. Um, Riley, I've just known forever since he was in Wasp. Um, yeah. You know, and then, and then we've known each other very well for a long time. So I, I was lucky enough to play with April Wine a few times in my career and met Miles and fanboyed out on him. And he was a tremendous guy and the band, sounded so amazing that i wanted to steal their 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 live front of house engineer they sounded that good mm. um and uh and then steve just a just a bro just like another family member you know it's horrible and and when you hear that it scares the shit out of you because neither of them were that old you know i'm coming up on 60 next year yeah. so i'm like i'm getting uber healthy and you know, I mean, my skin looks good, doesn't it? You know, yeah, and it does. Yeah, Let me great. push you full screen. I mean, <laughs> I mean you yeah, go. you look incredible. <laughs> you know, teeth are good. Teeth are good. Keeping you it know? together, man. But yep. um, it, it's just, you know, thank God they gave us music, you know? Yeah. So okay. we got that, you know? 
Mm-hmm. But, you know uh, I, I, I want to le- remember the good times. Sure. You, you know, surrounding yourself with uh, great musicians, and you know, you were lucky to have one of the greatest songwriters of our genre. You know, and Janie mm-hmm. Lane, and um, he tragically passed away as well. Um, what was it to you? Was was he? to you a great songwriter from the beginning or did he just develop into one did you know right away how great of a songwriter he was or did it come with time <clears throat> when i auditioned for the band and first heard the band like eric and i were in a band be- way before warrant like a year or two maybe before warrant started and or maybe it was a year um but when I first saw Eric, ran back into Eric, and they were looking for a guitar player, I went and listened to some music with Eric because they were looking, you know, Janie wanted a new lead guitar player. And I went in and some of the tunes I heard were tunes that he hadn't written, that the that the old guys in the band had written, that, that him and Steven had replaced, right? Yeah. With Jerry and Eric. And they were okay, you know? Um, Janie's, I did hear Down Boys, and that's a song I auditioned on, was Down Boys. That's one of them, one of the three. And then Heaven. So once I got in the band and I started watching how he worked, yeah, I, you know, and then once it got to the point where we were recording our first two records, you know, and he came in with stuff and the way that we worked and the way that it ended up on records, it, it, amazing, amazing talent, you know, um, lucky to have a guy like that that's that talented that's a wordsmith like that he read a lot so that's why the lyrics are a lot deeper than a lot of other bands yeah you know, that's t- why you get that's why you get tunes like mr rainmaker or 30 yes. in a raggedy jar you get they're little they're really little stories so every song's a little story it was a little story to him and and uh yeah you're right he was amazing you know he's he's missed um more than people can understand you know we we are a pretty private band and uh that's you know we'll just tell you we miss him we love him it's a shame you know of course of course this next thing i is you've already spoken about this it's well documented but i wanted to get a little more information from you i'm just i'm just, I just out of curiosity so sure. so it's you know bo hill the producer on your first two albums has been very complimentary of both you and eric and your humility and your professionalism and your willingness to concede the solos on on the first album to Mike Slamer. Now, I'll be honest with you, I did not know about this until several years ago. All this all these years I I thought it was you guys, but you guys were so humble. You know, this could have really resulted in like big time problems. Here's the part that I haven't necessarily heard you discuss and want to dig into a little bit more with you. When they brought you you and Eric in the room and said, hey, guys, this is what's going to go down. Mike's going to do the solos. What Did it take some time for you guys to work through this and, and, and agree to it? Or was it? did you guys kind of know right off the bat, hey, if this is for the greater good of the album and the band as a whole, we're, on, we're in. Let's do it. How long did it take you all to reach that? Well, Mike didn't play every solo. Mike plays some solos. Mike plays parts of solos i play parts of solos Mm -hmm. there's solos where it's me and mike there's solos where it's all me there's solos where it's all mike okay um and i've gone over that list for both records with um a guy named mr shred okay um a good friend he's a good dude he and he saw us live and he's all this is some i heard you didn't play on your records and i just watched you live and i said well let's sit down and i'll I'll clear the air once and for all. So I cleared the air once and for all with him, track by track by track. Gotcha. Intro solo, main solo, outro solo. So if you want to go through that whole thing, which takes a long time, you can go check him out. He's a good dude, not to, not to promote him on your site, but that's the reality. Um, for us, to be honest with you, it, it, it's, it wasn't some great thing. I mean, Mike is an amazing guy. Mike is an amazing player. But to, to us in hindsight especially we we think that bo hill was lazy um mm, okay you know, because he just didn't he didn't take the time i mean if you've got if you go on and you listen to solos on 32 pennies that's me the intro is mike the outro is mike the main solo is me if you listen to solos on big talk the intro stinger is mike the main solo is me the outro is mike so you would go well if you played the main solo in that and it's a great solo 
pat myself on the back. You know, why wouldn't you have the outro solo? So, um, my, you know, Bo says it was agreed on. Everybody was cool with it. It was more like we accepted, you know, what he wanted to do. Okay. And that's what he wanted to do. Okay. And it was our first record. And instead of capturing the band the way the band was and working with the band the way the band was, he had a different vision and thought that it needed a little extra sauce. And that's what he did. He tried it with kicks. He yeah. tried it with a weird, you know, you can talk to Reb Beach about it. And, and Reb and I have talked about it a lot because we play together, you know, at gigs. So, um, look, am I, am I, do I have a, you know, am I, what's the best way to put it? We're way over it. Yeah. I, I could give two, you know, shits, you know, about it. The fact of the matter is I know what went on. It's out there. Mike is a fantastic guy. His uh, contributions to the first two records are fantastic. I wouldn't change that now that they're out there. Mm -hmm. um, but if I had an opportunity to not let that happen, uh, I would definitely take that back for See, sure. I I'm glad to give you this platform because I'm going to be honest, I have not gotten to watch the, I think you said, Mr. Shred, I have not gotten to watch that breakdown. But what I did see was, was that Bow Hill interview he did. I don't know how long ago it's been with Full and Bloom where he, I mean, he made it sound like you guys didn't do anything. So, you know, this is a good education and, and a good platform for you to kind of set that There's, record straight. Yeah, Mike, Mike played a few, you know, not a few, he played a lot of solos. I played just as many. I played, you know, Rainmaker, for instance, there you go. Yeah. That's me. You okay. know, um, I like the fact yeah. that it that it pushed you to become determined and, and a better guitar player and uh -oh. and you know, you know dogging, heaven, dogging, heaven, most dog. of the heaven soul most of the heaven soul is me. The out the out the the last four and a half seconds is Mike. Wow. So you tell me. So it's it's <laughs> it's um it's in, it's unfortunate that you know, and then we did a second record because the first record was successful. You're like, let's do this again. And then finally we broke bread and went and did, worked with Michael Wagner and that didn't happen again. Mm. And if you listen to Dog Eat Dog, which is all me. Yeah. There you Beautiful. go. Beautiful. Beautiful album. Know? So, so it's just, it's something that happened long ago. Yeah. You've seen Mike since I saw Mike just prior to COVID and Mike's a love, like I said, I can't say what a great, greater guy is and a shredder and his wife, you know, Susan is, is, is amazing. We've got a great family. It's more a thing with Bo to where I think he could have done something a little different uh, and, and probably allowed the band to be the band because wow. that's what the producers are really supposed to do. Interesting. To let the band be the band, capture them, capture the magic and let it go out. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, you know, here's the thing that I always, you know, when I was doing some research for this interview and I always thought that cherry pie was a mountain compared to dirty, rotten, filthy, stinking rich, but they actually sold pretty similar to the same. Is that correct? Yeah, I don't, I couldn't tell you now with the way that they keep track of everything where they're at, but they could be over 3 million each. They're, they were both about the same. Wow. Um, and then dog eat dog went gold. Yeah. Um, I think um, I think Rocklahoma and or Rocklahoma Rocklaholic. See, I'm, I'm we're talking about Oklahoma, and I'm yeah. like Rock, which we played last year or this year. Yeah, um, right there, Rockaholic and uh, Dirty Rotten. Look at that. That's oh, Rocklahoma. That's you know, that's yeah, with Doug Burgess go. from IDL. Doug, yeah, good dude. He he brought us there. Yeah, I think both of those records are like ten foil right now. I think we're to ten foil. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, if you go to any, you know, if you go to my home, I don't have gold records and platinum records and double platinum records on the wall. I, I could really give two shits. Wow. Um, I've got them and I've done them. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got 14, 15 awards worldwide. And, and I used to have a, a wall of, you know, of wow. But that's just not who I am. I, I'm a regular guy. I've got a family. I've got a day gig. I've had a day gig for eight and a, 18 and a half years. You and know? That's with Pearl, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a senior salesman for Pearl. There you go. Look at me. The Pearl shirt on. <laughs> um, 
uh, Dave from uh, from L.A. Um, Pearl's huge for me. Pearl's Pearl's the guys I work with at Pearl. You know, my vice president's my direct contact. My president, I've you know known him for 30, 40 years. They're fabulous businessmen. I you know, um, I've learned a lot in business from them. Business acumen's spot on. I manage um, some great accounts for Pearl. I have a lot of fun doing that. But when I do that in Warrant, it's about an eighty-hour work week for me. Oh wow! So that's who I am. I'm not. I'm not a rock star guy. I'm not a, you know, I've got a degree in electronic engineering, I'm Microsoft certified, I'm educated. I'm, I'm, I'm just not that dude that, <laughs> you know, that that's the rock star with all the records on the wall and yeah. come and see them fit, you know what I mean? Have you always been that way? Or I mean, did that kind of come as, as you started to age? And then of course, I, when that, in the twenties, yeah. I had all that stuff on the walls and, you know, and it was like a wow factor, you know, but I yeah. could, I just, it doesn't define who you are, you know, right. your relationships with your family and your friends and, and your fans really. And, you know, my band family, that's what defines me, you know, and, Absolutely. and, uh, and I get more joy out of, you know, a puppy jumping up on my face and licking my face. <laughs> yeah. Than I do, you know, uh, playing the rock star bullshit, you know, 25 Sometimes years. I love it. 25 years ago this month december i got to i had a chance to open up for um warrant and when they played at the uh the place called the brink i don't believe you were on guitar at that in the 98 um nope. but doug burgess you know he he did bring you guys to idl and we me and her got to open up for you guys at the idl ballroom uh when the first time he brought you guys um I think it was on a Sunday, um, okay. and of course you you, know, you spoke about Rock, Oklahoma, and you're very fam familiar with Tulsa, and you've played Tulsa, and I've seen you with Firehouse and Trickster, you know, at the Pavilion, and it was an amazing show. Um, yeah, I was backstage, and we actually we got to play that Rock, Oklahoma that year, and and you guys were there. It was 2007, the very first year, and you guys had Jamie St. James on vocals, Ooh, yeah, and. Um, uh, you know, Jane, Janie Lane was there and I think he was, was supposed to, he was coming out with a uh, great white to sing a song. And I guess there were some, some, some words said back there. I know he was pretty uh, upset about, you know, I think he felt like he needed to be on stage with you guys, you know, you know, a lot of hurt feelings back then. But then of course oh. the next year you guys get together with Janie and you play at night at, at Rock, Oklahoma 08 and an amazing show. You know, you guys were just always just kick ass on stage. I love your you know, just watching the Gazaris '87 show was just amazing. <laughs> and I know it's you know you guys were young and, and and all that stuff, but just that excitement you guys would bring to the stage. So you know, we're always proud to have you when you come to Rock, Oklahoma, absolutely, or, or Tulsa. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and we it, love we love all cities in Oklahoma. We, you know, let's not forget Oklahoma city and, right. you know, prior obviously where rock, Oklahoma is and Tulsa, and, you know, we've been all over that, that state. So, um, you know, one of the promote, another promoter, there's Howard, Howard's amazing. We do some casinos for him. So we love our, we, you know, the meat and potatoes for warrant is the center of the, of the, of the nation. That's yes. where we do really well. I mean, coastal we don't do so well it's weird it's it's a weird thing but in the middle we we really kill it so you know we we can't wait to see everybody when we're up there we're actually there's two gigs there's another one that got booked yeah it's the, I, i've got that info for you it's the night after yeah. and it's it's uh cherokee casino in west mm -hmm. siloam there so you if, if you guys can't catch that show at Hard Rock on the 19th, just go out there to Cherokee Casino, yeah. West Salem, the, the following night. I would be doing our viewers a disservice if I didn't get to some of these comments. Where there's a lot of love in yeah, here for let's, you. Let's get to them. Uh, okay. we, we've got, uh, let's see here, let me scroll. Uh, Jerry Garrett says he saw you guys live in 89 opening for Motley Crue. It was an awesome show. Uh, our viewer, Jay North, says, hello, Joey. Warrant was the first band I ever met. I want to meet and greet from a Tulsa radio station when I was only 16. I still have your autograph 30 years later. And he does have a question for you as well. Let me uh, let me scroll back down to that. He says, Janie Lane said he loved the people in Tulsa at Warrant concerts because they know how to party. Was there anything else about Tulsa that stood out to you besides that? Um, I mean, I'm just, I've got a lot of good friends in Tulsa. Um, the people are just nice, you know. I mean, coming from a coast, 
you know, anybody that's been to LA knows there's a lot of assholes there, you know, let's <laughs> cut to the chase. And, um, I'm one of them. Okay. I'm one of them. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but it's just, people are just nice. I mean, it's just, it's just, I, I can't tell you, you got to have the perspective of being in LA and getting on the road and, you know, and all the crazy shit that goes down out there. And, you know, when you get to a place where it's not as, you know, rapid fire pace of life and people are just enjoy it and they're nice. Um, so that's the biggest thing I can say, you know, that's why I have so many friends that, that from there that still live there, you know, yeah. and, and, and friends that live down in Texas that go up there a lot. Even Eric, Eric goes up into Oklahoma all the time uh, on time off and takes his RV up there and goes to casinos and has fun with his wife. You know, it's just cool yeah. people. Yeah, and there's another good guy that he he's a viewer of the show quite a bit, and, and he knows a lot of you guys. He's actually developed relationships with uh, you rock stars along the way. His name uh, is, is Matt Lemieux. And um, I have to put this up. This is an old picture of you, obviously, and you're wearing a jacket there. Well, Matt ended up acquiring, he acquired that jacket, uh, and he has it hanging in his home. He said you signed it for him. It looks like the autograph is from 2016. Where the heck did you get this thing? Do you remember who made this for you? It's pretty incredible. I think Heidi Richman made that, I think. Amazing. Um, I don't sh think she did the art, but I think she did everything else. Okay. That looks like one of Heidi's. But yeah, that was the uh, the whole robotics thing. And yeah, wow. that's fun, isn't it? Look at that sexy yeah. bastard. Well, here. I'm telling you. I, I like the white outfit that you guys wore in heaven. And I guess you guys never oh, brought man. those back out again. But I love those outfits. What happened to that guy? What? He doesn't have hair anymore. He's a. You know, you're a little okay. heavier, baby. Um, no, I'm joking. Um, the white outfits. Wow, whose idea was that? Let's pick on the guy that's not alive. Okay. <laughs> I take it you're not a fan of the white. <laughs> I don't care. I don't. I don't care. I think it's all just. It's just all fond memories. You know what I mean? People yeah. say, "Oh my God, look at all the white. They look like new kids on the block." I mean, who oh, gives a shit? You know what I mean? <laughs> what you look like and what do, what do you sound like live i'll tell you what come see our band live 110 percent live no backing tracks no bullshit and then go look at another band that uses them that sounds like a t that sounds like a cd whatever you want whatever is your fancies i'm not going to pick on any of those bands all i'm going to say is i'm into live music i like it when bands are live that's why i go see them i got records if i want to hear the record i'll put it in you know, I listen to the radio all the time. I hear music. I grew up in my genre. You know, I like a lot of bands, but I will tell you this. There's nothing like a live rock and roll band. 110% live. You're bringing this up. So I have a, I have a question because like Scott sure. said, we're doing research on you guys. I just want to know how this was done back in the day because I... We're in a band that uses tracks, okay? So don't hate us. No, nobody, hate nobody look. is not. <laughs> nobody is lip syncing. Everybody's playing, but we're a freaking cover um, band. Like you know, we each anyway. his own. Yeah, each exactly. Own. I'm but, just saying, I don't. <laughs> it's cool, man. I mean, most people don't, and, and there's a time and place for them, whatever. That's another debate. I get it when I get it when cover bands actually do it. That's like a biggest hall pass for many. When I see other bands from my genre that have sold millions of records do it, it bums me out because I've seen them not do it. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the deal too. You got people paying two, three, 500 bucks. They, they want to yeah. see their guy say, I totally get that argument. They sounded better when they didn't do it. Or if there's key, like some guys go, well, I've got orchestration and we've got 8 billion vo you know, vocals going on. Okay. Number one, listen to the Eagles, five voices, kill it. You know, if you can yeah. find part harmony is bigger than 30, 30 of the same note on a record, it's way bigger. So get it together and learn how to sing. Number two, if there's orchestration or keyboards, put a keyboard player on stage, have them play it. Boom, you're done. Not you guys. Some of the big bands. Sure, I got, got you. The money, they've got the money. They can do it. They don't the, have to go the to work stage room. Day. Yeah, Dude, they can go take vocal lessons. They can learn how to warm their voice up. They can care about it. 
Um, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, absolutely. I totally get it. But but my here's my question for you: Why I even opened that can of worms? I was watching you guys' 1989 performance of Down Boys on the Arsenio Hall show. Now it's right. very evident that that every everything's you guys are live. Janie is singing live. The guitars right. are live. It kicks to the solo. You can tell it wasn't the solo on the album, but. Right. When the background vocals kick in, they're monstrous. Now, how was that done back then? Was that done in post-production, or, or is, is it piping through as you guys are playing? So, in the very beginning, in the first record, now, if that was during if that was during the first record, I'll tell you, we, we played a few gigs with a band from Virginia, mm -hmm. and they used tracks. Okay. They had Tascam 234s, and they used tracks. And we're like, wow, that's rad. So when we made our first record, we had Bo Hill make tapes that had vocals, all of the backing tchotchkes, all of the tambourines, all of the shit that you can't play live when you've got when you're a drummer, you can't play tambourine, right? Right. I was a singer kid, but in our band, it probably wouldn't have gone over so great. So we had all that. We used it. We did use it, but we layered it just like a band does now, right? Mm -hmm. Just like just like any of the big bands that y'all hear that are getting busted because you know they they drop their bass and it's still playing, um, <laughs> but it was vocals, keyboards, and exactly what I'm talking about, uh, right? Chachkis, right? Yep. So we played we played a gig in Japan on that tour, so you might have heard that. But we also sang on top of it, yes. so it was layered down. Okay? Exactly. <clears throat> We played a gig in Japan on the first tour, and there was a there was a barricade that broke. Some Japanese fan got their leg broken, so our tour got cut short there. Mm. And in order to make it up, make the money up somehow, we said let's hit Hawaii on the way home. We booked three shows at a you know thousand seat club at the t at the time, sold out in fifteen minutes. We got over there when we got to the club. Guess what? Didn't make it. Mm, um, the tracks. The tracks. Yeah. This is serious. And we just looked at each other and we're like, all right, no more tracks. So that's pretty much 1989-ish yes. when that stopped. Okay. Um, we did do it. You know, I'm not saying we didn't. I'm not trying to pick on anybody. I'm just saying now we don't. And it does bum me out when I see a band that's not live. I mean, I, I want a live band. I want somebody, you know, to know their craft and sing you know sure tv per look, tv performances you know. they're all basically like that you know and, and i always give tv performances a pass because it's tv well, and a lot of times it was kind of out of out of their the band's control you know that the, the producers like this is how it is you know like the super bowl they're like this is how it is you know yeah i mean i just i give anybody a hall but i'll you know look i'm not complaining about those bands i'm just saying give some effort you know what i, I mean? get it and i get it the, the bands and i'm not talking about people that are working their ass off in cover bands in america that's a totally different ball of wax when you're but if you're playing your original music and you've sold 50 million records then you should take some fucking vocal lessons if you can't sing you bet I'm you know with I mean? you. Yeah, I'm with you, man. I am. Yeah. No. Okay, let me let me do a few more viewer comments, then I'm gonna let Scott maybe ask another couple questions and we'll cut okay. you loose. Rick Fox is a good friend of the show. He says, Hey, since I just joined Freak Show, we should do some shows together. Carlos Cavazo, Stet Howland, Ronnie Borchert, and I have a new album out and a support slot for Warrant would be killer. So we're gonna have to hook you and Rick Fox up on that. That'd be cool. I know Rick well. I know Carlos well. Um, yeah. I don't know those other guys, but um, love Rick. Very cool. He used to have the best hair in the world, Rick Fox. Still does. He's in some great bands. Yeah. Yeah. Todd Autry says I was at the Warrant Kingdom Come show '88 or '89 at the Cabaret Hall at the Fairgrounds. A wow. uh, lot of love in here, man. Oh. Dale Nichols says, "What is your favorite song to play live?" Yeah. Um. Wow. I like to play the heavier, faster stuff. Cool. Like songs like Sure Feels Good, Boogie Tune, like Rainmaker, Uncle Tom's is cool once it gets going. Um, <laughs> so Damn Pretty's fun, Inside Out's fun, stuff like that, Dell. I like the hard stuff. Excellent, for man. Harder, hard for warrant. Not hard to play, but harder. How's that? 
That's great. You know, a lot of bands they these days they're coming out with their you know the, the documentaries and their their movies on Netflix and things like that. And you know, the, I remember behind the music VH1s, you know, any cool band to come out with, with, with one of those, you know, would love to see the inside and you know scoop of of all the bands and things that went on and. If you guys ever thought about, you know, coming out with anything like that, a documentary of some sort of to explain um, the history of Warrant? A rockumentary? A rockumentary. <laughs> yeah. We've talked about it. We have a friend that's in um, the MI business world that, that actually wrote a treatment. We um, shopped some stuff around and got a little bit of interest here and there. We'll see. I mean, we're not a book band. We're not we're not a we're not a i don't know if we'll ever do something like that or not it'd be fun there's a lot to tell there's a lot of great stories there's a lot of things that people don't know about the band um that would probably enlighten people and and make them understand some things maybe Hmm. um but we'll see you know we're not we're not like an award band we did the awards when we were the first two records we did, I think we went to the Grammys once and partied, and then we went to American. We were nominated for an American Music Award, and I think we played on the American Music Awards once, um, two track. Mm. The judge uh, introduced us, which is cool. Wow! Um, but you know, we're just we're just at this point we just are an American rock band that likes to play live, and if we can get our shit together in the next five years and maybe you'll see another record i don't know man it's it's um never say never you know well we can't let you go without a gear question this is our good buddy scott seaman he says dude i want your guitar tone are you still using oh. amps or are you using kemper fractal modelers i don't use modelers man um so i've, I've um and, and in my uh experience like 80 percent of your tone comes from your hands yeah you know, it, rhythm wise, it really comes from your your right hand. There it is. There is that uh, right hand. There's the right hand. So it really does. I mean, you you could you could go back and see Ed Van Halen play a Fender Squire, and he just sounds like Ed Van Halen. You know. So, um, but if you want to get into gear, I use GMP guitars. That one that you just saw was a GMP. Okay. Uh, they're they're net they're set neck. That's a GMP. It's out of um, GMPGuitars.com. Dan Lawrence used to work at Jackson. When I worked at Jackson, uh, he, CC DeVille uses them. Vivian Campbell uses them. Um, Neil Giraldo uses them. All kinds of dudes use them. Um, Eric uses them. Um, so, and then I use uh, Hughes and Kettner amplification. Um, so I either use a Grandmeister uh, 36, which is a 36 watt amp. I've got these cryotone tubes in it. Um, I'm a gear nut. I've got you know, I use a, a a Black Spirit 200 sometimes, which is a floor amp, which is a um, analog uh, EQ with with uh, digital power. But yeah, I do not model. I don't like modeling amps. They sound shrill. Yeah. They don't put air. Um, to me, I don't use in ears. I have a monitor in front of me. It's loud as fuck on my side of the table. <laughs> <laughs> Robert. Robert comes over every time at sound check and says, dude, it's too fucking loud over here. And <laughs> I promptly go, well, then don't stand here. Oh, and, um, man. you know, and I got a big side fill, you know, with his voice screaming at me at 140 yeah. DB, but, um, easy. I like to push air. I like to feel music. Music yes. isn't just earring to me. And, um, and I like to feel it. So I'm loud and, and, uh, yeah, gear, and I, yeah, I use, you know, other companies I use, I, if I get in trouble, if I didn't say it, Sheptone Strings, Four Star Wire, Morley. I've been with Morley since Jesus was a baby. Hmm. Um, Scott and Bill and the guys and the whole crew at Morley are amazing over there. Um, you know, and Houston Kettner, I think I got everybody. If I forgot anybody, I'm sorry. I love you all. No, that's a, that's a great rundown. And then and then the cool gear that you wear on your body is Warn Star. What Warn a cool Star. And that's dude. an in guitar pick I'm about to choke on. Oh, okay. <laughs> what a um, cool rock and roll clothing. And, oh, wait a minute. We've got uh we've got the the strap um American drag seats. My buddy my buddy down in uh in uh Texas makes those. Those are killer. Those straps. Those straps are padded. 
How'd you get you hooked know, up with Warren Star, or did they come to you guys? I don't know if it was through one of the other guys in the band or whatever, but um, Stefan and Sylvia, they're like family now. Right on. Um, I mean, we love them dearly, and, and their their business has taken off, which is fantastic. There's, it's a good uh, a good story for for us all to know is that you can have a passion and do something and, and start a business and be successful if you work hard. You know, kind of like what Warrant is. You know, we're not the biggest band in the world. We're not the smallest band in the world, but we're still here, and uh, we're not going anywhere soon. So. It's yeah. great news for you us know, fans. You you've done some amazing things, and, and I've you know I've seen you on the Motley Crue tour. I've seen you on the Poison tour. When you right here in Tulsa, you play at the Skelly the Skelly uh, Park. I guess it was uh, the baseball field there, and uh, amazing show. And you guys were kicking ass, and and you know, Nikki Six recently talked about the the rock hall of fame and you know if he gets in great if not it's no big deal you know i think your guys' songs in that with that genre with janie his writing abilities you guys had greater songs than a lot of these guys who are in the rock hall of fame and how do you feel about the rock hall of fame and do you feel like some of these bands that you open up for like poison and motley crew deserve to get in um look i love poison they're friends of mine the Motley Crue guys, even though they talk shit about us in their book and, and talk shit about us. Why it's like, why do you, well, if you're so successful, why do you talk shit? I don't know. Who do but, they not talk shit about? Uh, it's just silly. It's like, it's like to sell a, sell a seat, but um, I, I'm a Motley fan, you know, um, I'm, it's hard to swallow for me now, to be honest with you, but to each his own, you know, good for them. Um, you know, I think that if somebody's successful, uh, in the music business and makes a difference, um, that, that accolades of the rock and roll hall of fame or a Grammy or an American music award. I mean, I agree with like, uh, you know, Chad, Chad Smith from the red hot chili peppers is, is, is a guy we're not best friends, but we're, we're, we're friendly to one another. He has like four or five Grammys. I think he keeps them in his, um, his laundry hamper in his laundry room. Wow. Wow. So, and they're all dented up and chipped and he could give two fucks about that. And to be honest with you, that's about how I feel. Yeah. That's why I don't have the records all over my walls. That's why I, I just don't need a pat on the back from anybody to validate who I am or what I do. Um, not to be an asshole. I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm just empower yourself. Like I said before, if my friends, if my family's happy, I'm happy. Amen. You know, I'm the guy. I don't need any Christmas presents. I want my family to be happy. I want my friends to be happy. I want my fans to be happy. That makes me happy. I'm happy every day I wake up breathing. That's enough for me. You know what I mean? I don't mm -hmm. need a lot. And and so, you know, I think that the way that that um, that organization treats musicians is fucked mm -hmm. yeah you know they they don't have everybody in there that should be in there they put people in there ahead of other people that should be in there yes and when they go to the venue to do the gig they treat the people like shit you can see it all over the internet you know yeah. oh yeah so, so uh, i mean it doesn't it doesn't it almost makes some of the people that are in there look like dicks yeah so I feel i'll you. just leave it at that that's great. Mm. You, we're going to let you go here in a minute. You, you said you work about right. 80 hours a week, but let's just say Joey Allen has a free day where he can do whatever he wants, but you, but not musical, nothing musical. What are you doing to give yourself a great day that's not music related? He does own a swimming pool. Oh. I swim. I used to play water polo when I was in high school. Look out. Um, oh, nice. I, I am a, I could never sit down, so I just do shit. Um, I, I, go, I like to go to the river and, 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 and I got a few sea dews and a boat and I like to do that. And I got a house, you know, where I'm at now out in Arizona by the river. Um, it's not my main house. It's just a house to come out and have fun at. And I'm doing stuff today after my gig with Pearl, I'm putting together anybody. I'm mm. putting my gas line together tonight for my dryer wow. and I have there my washer go. coming apart and I am pressure washing my been in my washer because my wife says it's got crap in it. So I'm doing that. Not crap, but like mold and shit. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. I'm a normal dude. Um, and my dad gave me some, some bitch and set of tools. 
going to fix it, man. You know, do you know that those power washers come up, come with those, uh, some what they call them, surface cleaners or whatever? There's like a yeah, power man. washer, and you can just, just like just move it around. Like it's almost like a floor cleaner, you know. Yeah. We got. It's great yeah. for uh, the pool decks. Scott, you're geeking out with me. That so that's it, Jan. I mean, I'm just a normal dude. Most most guys are. Most guys like to tinker and stuff like that. Spend time with my family. That's Love the biggest it. thing in my chihuahuas. I'm on Love an interview, bro. There's my there's my 11 year old son just coming. Where's mom? I don't know. Go find her. <laughs> yeah, we're Good gonna let you. We're going to let you go be with them. You've given us an hour and it's, yeah. it's amazing. There's still a lot of viewer comments in here. I'm sorry to the, the, the viewers who we didn't get to your comments and questions. Sure, sir. Quick, quick of them. Um, okay. I love his honesty. That's what I'm. Okay. Um, that's from Michelle. Shell, you got some more you want to read? Um, oh, let me put on my glasses here. Oh, you're cool. I'll, I'll uh, hit him real quick. Uh, there we go. Mark Welcome Morris. <laughs> Let's see. Mark Morris says, wonderful seeing Joey Allen. Yes, we agree with that. Uh, Mike, Michael Chabola says, it's all about the music. Amen. Amen. That's so true. Uh, Rick Fox, normal dude here too. Yeah, Rick, we've had Rick on the show a couple times. He's a great interview. Great guy. Super cool to talk to. Um, there's just a lot here. Yeah, Todd Autry says I was at the Warrant Kingdom Come show. I think maybe we already read that one. Sorry, I'm trying to scroll through all this fast. All right. but, all right. but again, guys, um, Joey, we'll send you the link to this. If, if, if in all your spare time you want to hop on and say hey to some people here in the, in the chat, we'll let you do that. But guys, one, one more time, make sure you pick up your tickets for this show Friday, January 19th at Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Tulsa. You can get uh, more information at warrantrocks.com. Uh, it's doors at 7, show at 8. And it's not just Warrant, it's Winger. Winger. Aren't those guys awesome, man? Let me tell you something about Winger. I mean, they should be above us. Winger is like, they're like the best musicians in the world. And, yes. and to play after them, to be honest with you, to play after Reb and Paul and, and, and John sucks because <laughs> they're so good. Yeah. They're so good. And they're such nice guys. And, um, they're amazing. They're uh, you catch them while you can because I don't know how much longer they're going to do it. Oh, um, you know, there's been some talk about kept taking a break and doing a lot of his other music stuff he does. But they're an amazing band and just fantastic guys and some really great songs from those guys. So um, it's a good show, man. You'll you'll get it. You'll get a good two and a half, three hours of uh, of good good rock and roll from both of us. Awesome, awesome, man. awesome. Well, we want to wish you and your family a really Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Thanks for being such an and amazing guy. we definitely guy. want to be there at Hard Rock. Yes, we'll see you out yes, there for sure. I got you on the list, right? I, th I yes. think so. We appreciate that. I'm going to look. Don't, don't hang up yet. Okay. Let me uh, make sure. I'm, the, I'm also, not only am I the MD, but I'm also the guest list master see look at you <laughs> businessman he's a multitasker i like you it. would think what do i do when somebody sends me too many guests how do i how do i yeah i got you on here scott three uh, three takes three vip passes right you are the man you are the man you that's go. gonna you got my number right scott i do i do yeah, just and, reach and, out to me like in the morning of the show i'm up i'm up before you are so just call we, me we, killer. we would love to have eric or anybody else from the band on um to to help promote your guys and yeah, at any sure. at any those time guys, those guys charge five bucks to, to do it <laughs> <laughs> they're not they're cool gonna, like you <laughs> you don't want to hear from them trust I, me I, next chat i, I want to talk about some pool stuff because we i i'm a first time pool owner and it's been kicking my ass and <laughs> I, i'm sure you got a lot of uh some insights to you know what robbie crane is uh used to own a pool cleaning business and right? and i think he's playing those gigs because they're in the middle of the month so i'll tell you when you meet robbie crane you might want to talk to him and get some tips from robbie crane because he is the pool master i'm wow. not the pool master. did you I'm know like that in, I'm in training. Okay. Did you know that Robbie Crane uh, played? Uh, what Doug Burgess brought uh, some, their bands down here. He was stuck in St. Louis, and his flight was canceled or or it was, it was delayed, and they had to get them pronto. Pronto, he took a Uber, a five hundred dollar Uber from St. <laughs> Louis to Tulsa to play a show. He's a good That's dude. That's the longest Uber ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Robbie Crane is a machine, yeah. and he's a badass and that's why you know he does private gigs he just did one for eddie trunk last week where he played with fucking everybody and their mother and then he just mm -hmm. did one for chris angel the other night where he played with paul stanley and robin zander and 
all these top notch guys and, and he's just a machine and he's one of my best friends. And, so uh, fun. you know, I have a man crush on Robbie Crane, so everybody knows, nice. you know, be careful. I told my wife, she called, she, she, uh, she sees it when he calls me, you know, his picture, not his picture, but a plate of nachos comes up. <laughs> my wife goes, Oh, Oh, your boyfriend's calling. Oh, jeez. Um, so no, Robbie and I are just tight. We're, we're a lot alike. So, so cool. Man. Um, yeah, God bless him. Ask him, though, Scott. He's the pool master. Oh, cool, okay. man. Cool. Well, go be with your family. We love you, and we'll see you out at Hard, Hard Rock on January 19th. Joey Allen from Warrant, thank you for being on Tulsa Music Stream. Thank you, everybody. Are awesome. have, a, have a great holiday season. Be you kind too. to one another. You too. Merry man. Christmas. We'll see you soon. All right. Be good. Take care. Bye-bye. Awesome. Wow. Wow. What a cool guy. Yeah. And, you know, I was worried I didn't have enough info or enough questions and stuff. And, and actually, I was, you know, I had plenty. And, but he was definitely, uh, you know, answering everything that came his way. And, you know, I wanted to talk about uh, Bobby Brown's book, uh, Dirty Boy Rockers. Oh, you and, did. And, oh. and I was going to bring that up. But, you know, I, you know, because she's 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 claimed you know some things, some accusations accusations about um, some Janie. some rockers and Janie Lane being drugged and all that stuff and yeah. and you know I wanted to ask him about that, but I didn't want to you know bring any bring him down or piss no, him you know no I it's did. not his place to maybe talk about some yeah, things yeah and, and, and quite honestly I I mean I think we have a way to, to actually get her on the show if you want to go down that road yeah, that's yeah. something I think we could probably make happen um, yeah. Man, what a, what a down to earth, super cool guy, guys! Like, I'm gonna put it up one more time. Everybody in this area, even if you're not in this area, you make a little road trip down here, January 19th at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Go catch Warrant and Winger. It's gonna be a great time. Doors at seven, show at eight. More info at warrantrocks.com. That was a blast. That was a great way to end 2023. Yeah. What a what a neat thing. Yeah, and and thank thanks to all of our sponsors and and, and every one of you guys out there for always uh, checking in with us. You know, coming in the chat room and and talking and asking questions. And sorry we can't get to all of them because sometimes you know they they have things to talk about and and um but we try to get to, to as many as we can and, and if not we always pop them up on the screen so so that they can see them and when they read it back and or watch it back yeah. hopefully they'll uh, see some of your guys's questions and yep. come in the chat room and answer them um, so they shared they shared our um uh, you know they they promoted it on their uh warrant page so it's that amazing. was cool i love when bands do that oh god it, it helps, it, it so helps. Much. you know you can't you know, some people at six o'clock on a Thursday, it's Christmas time. No, you know, not everyone has time to check in. Well, you know. I, that's why it's cool to have these uh, replays available, and we always do. Uh, I kind of blew through our sponsors last time. I'm not going to do that this time. We want to give a shout out to those who deserve it. Psychomo Filmworks. If you guys have any need for video, get a hold of Psych at psychomo at gmail.com. He did our wonderful intro for the show. Looks great. Get a hold of him if you have any video needs. We we talked about Doug Burgess. What a great guy he is. All the cool shows he brings to our area. Thank you, Doug, for your support of this show. Keep uh, up to date with what's going on at DEB Concerts by visiting debconcerts.com. They also have a Facebook uh, page as well. You can check that out. Dustin Little, great supporter of our show. He's such a good guy. If you have any IT needs whatsoever, his company is the one to contact, Okie PC. You can get a hold of them at 918-640-0892 or email dustin at okiepc.com. Do you need photographs for your band or business? Contact shipmentphotos.com. <laughs> There's one of those COVID coughs yeah. I warned you about. And they will make you look good and professional. Shipmentphotos.com. Identity merch. If you need screen printing, your band needs t-shirts, maybe your business does, uh, anything, go to Todd at identitymerch.com or call 918-521-5660. He still is printing the Tulsa Music Stream shirts. If you guys want to pick one of those up, just go to our Facebook page and click on our website link. It'll take you there where you can order one. Scott told you earlier, we're going to repeat it one more time. If you guys have not yet subscribed to our YouTube page, go to Tulsa Music Stream on YouTube. Get us to 1,000. Get us to 1,000 subscribers, and that'll change the game for us. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always know when we go live on YouTube. You can also see us on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. If audio is your thing, check us out on these podcast platforms, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and more. 
Man, that was a mouthful. Did you know <laughs> that when they first uh, went to cut a demo, um, they had a manager or a, a, someone who managed them or come, come in through Jerry Dixon, um, and she knew Prince and all that. And so was it Paisley? Paisley uh, Parks? Did, yeah, yeah, that? yeah. And, and they... Uh, cut you know gave him a money to cut a demo and wow and um uh, prince did and and so they they did that and then really they they wanted to see some live stuff and and they sent him some live stuff from probably uh the country club there in la and um and they passed man and so they went from they <clears throat> passed that and you would think that would be like heartbreaker you know yeah Prince just passed on you, and you're yeah. like, man, wow, okay. But they kept going. They were hungry, mm. and, and they went through. Uh, they had certain producers that they could have uh, picked from, like Bob Ezrin, you know, Alice mm-hmm. Cooper, Kiss. Yeah. They passed on him, yeah. and they passed on uh, a Queen's producer yeah. and uh, picked Bo Hill because of what, you know, he's done for Rat, and that was sure. their thing, you know, yep. that they wanted to be like the L.A. rocker guys, and they they wanted that, and they, th- they thought that he was going to be the one that got them more to the sound that they wanted, yeah. and, and, and now he goes, boy, I would, I wouldn't mind, you know, having that producer, you know, what's a, what's his name? Um, oh, not Wagner. Uh I'm sorry. No, you're good. Do you have it written down? Yeah. I, I wish I knew what you were talking about. Well, the Queen's producer, mm. Baker, I forget his name. Hmm. Anyway. Um, Baker Mayfield? No, no. Oh. <laughs> anyway, he wishes that he could work with him now. So. Oh, well, you know, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? But I'll tell you what, one thing we've learned, and I know Joey would echo this sentiment. Roy Thomas Baker. Roy Thomas Baker Mayfield. And here's another thing. That I wanted to talk to him. Down Boys and the Cars, right? Bye Bye Love. What about it? So if you put the vocals on Bye Bye Love, okay. right? Okay. Or the vocals of Bye Bye Love on Down Boys, mm-hmm. it flows perfectly. And they were actually, Rick Ocasek was, he, he heard that they were, he was wanting to sue Warren for that. Well, I hope someone does that mashup. Soon. They, there, it's, it, it's on it's YouTube. Out there. Oh, oh yeah. Oh man, of course it is. Okay. Well, what I was going to say is one thing we've learned, at, even at our lowly level, and I know Joey would echo echo this: the way that you have any level of success in the music industry, whether it be a band or even this stream, is tenacity. Never give up. If people pass on you, stay hungry. Keep fighting for what what you want, what you believe in. That's what uh, D. Snyder said. Stay hungry. <laughs> For sure. I mean, it worked for him. So don't ever give up. White yeah. Lion said that. White Lion said don't give up. I'll bet you don't, I'll bet you don't know that song. <laughs> oh, Be you don't know. Okay. Anyway. How's everybody doing out there? Is everybody going to have a Merry Christmas? What are your plans? You guys got some great plans this uh, this year, this yeah. summer? Let's see here. Uh, okay, Scott Seaman. Yeah, Scott Seaman said Roy Thomas Baker. Mm-hmm. I say Mayfield, but okay, we'll go with Roy Thomas Baker. Merry Christmas from Gilligan. Hi, Gilligan. Good to, good to see you in here again. Uh, Todd Autry, always replay the shows on YouTube. Thank you, bud. That we, we need that YouTube presence to grow. Justin McDougal, great job tonight. One cool mofo. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, Joey's awesome, man. I, I'd like to get him back again sometime. Uh, Rick Fox, I'd like to be at that show, weather permitting. Come on down, bro. It'd be fun to hook up with you. Uh, Mike Chabola, road trip. Yes, we need to see your face. It's been a while. So anyway, I don't have anything else. Yeah, come on Just, up, uh, Rick Fox. Come on up. Yeah, man. Ben Cutler, that was a great interview. Thank you so much. Uh, anyway, that's that's all I got. Just Tracy know- Robinson will be there front row. Can't wait for oh, the good. show. Just know this, guys. We're going to go get to work for uh, 2024. We have a couple buns in the oven. They they have not totally baked yet, so we're, we're going to keep on baking. Waking, but I'm kidding. We're going to see what we can produce and... and uh, get out there for you because these are fun and we love doing it 
and uh, it's a good time. So, you know, we, there was a uh, one that uh, Raymond Moore, I don't, did you read this one where he says, I got to meet you guys in Japan in 91 on the cherry pie tour no, while in the Navy. I the band that. gave us complimentary guest passes for the concert and we partied with you guys while, oh. while you're there, while there. Wish Still have my that. picture of Janie playing foosball. Man, Dang, so I wish cool. I would have seen that while we were with him. Sorry we missed that. I'm telling you, it would, I wish we, I, I, I miss having a third person who can help manage the chat because it we're we are juggling knives up here during did, these did you see the matt lemieux one Mm-mm. he says love you joey prior to rejoining warrant you were playing music again with the joey allen project and and flood the void i've been harassing you since late 2006 when i first met you for cds of these bands assuming they exist so my question is um were there any recordings every officially pressed Hmm. Um, all I've ever been able to track down is a pictures oh, M- MP3 from flood the void. I mean, so, oh, I hate it that we missed that. Yeah. So right hopefully now. he'll come in and see some of these. Um, but he was, you know, cool dude. Yeah. Well, we'll send him the link guys. We, we always do. We, after the interview, we'll email these guys the link and the, and, uh, we try to get him to come back in. He's fixing a, a dryer tonight. So yeah. I, you know, we'll cross our fingers on that. Anyway, Love you guys. We hope you have a really Merry Christmas uh, with your family. Um, if you don't have family, hook up with some friends and, and have, have a good time and be safe out there. Um, I hope you have family, though. I know I know the holidays can be tough for some people, but just know that uh, we love you, and we're so glad that you're here and you make this show happen. If no one was watching, there'd be no point in doing this, so thank you for watching. And tell all your friends about us if you would. Have a Merry Christmas, guys. We'll be back on real soon. Watch the page for the next show announcement. Happy New Year's, guys. Yeah, it'll be here soon. Love you. See you soon.